Hey everyone. So in this tutorial, I want to take a look at the basic trust example we examined last time. But I want to show you how we can do some cool things in Python that will improve our analysis. Specifically, I want to take a look at how we can use functions to uh, condense some of our code and make it more readable. And then I want to take a look at two different examples of how we can use those functions to uh, chain series of analyses together and make decisions based on the results. That sounds a little bit abstract, um, and, but basically in the first example, what I want to do is I want to loop through or I want to run a bunch of predetermined areas or try a bunch of predetermined areas and then make decisions based on the results of our analysis. Uh, and then, then in the second example, what I want to do is I want to do a similar thing, but now we're going to be changing the elastic modulus of the elements until we reach a certain uh, de decision criteria. So in the second example, we kind of have a fixed amount of areas, like we know how many iterations or analyses we want to run. Uh, but in the third example, we actually don't know that. Um, so it's going to be kind of cool to see how we can get results. But first, uh, let's see how we can write our analysis from last time using functions. So I'm going to copy over uh, the basic trust example into a new folder and let's just take a look at the code. Um, you'll probably notice that on the because <laughs> you have eyes, uh, this takes up a lot of space on the page already. If, if you want to look um, at what's going on, it's not too crazy because we have just, you know, a, a simple problem. We only have four nodes, three elements. So it's not too crazy, but you can imagine if you're defining a whole building with say like a hundred nodes, very quickly going through your code is going to get, uh, it's going to get burdensome. Um, it's going to be difficult to go from like the node section to the element section and then to the analysis section. Um, so a way that we can organize this is what I like to do is uh, define functions for key blocks of my code and the sections that I normally use. Uh, I will have one section where I create the materials and sections in our function. So for this code, we only have one material. It's not that complicated. Um, then I'll have a block of code where I actually create the model itself, so the nodes, the elements, fixities. I'll have a block of code for the recorders, so we can call those before we ultimately call the block of code for our analysis, uh, the section where we actually run the code, or the model, excuse me. So let's get to it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I'll give an overview of functions in Python. So we can define a function by just using this def uh, and I will call it the, the we'll call our first function get sections. Um, and so the way that Python uh, the way that you assign things to a certain function in Python is by using this indent. Um, and so the way Python looks at this now, everything at this indentation level is within the function. Uh, so if I were to say do x equals 1, this is not part of the function, but if I indent it, now this is part of the function. Uh, and this indentation level will last until either the code's done, it reaches like a command on a lower level, or you define a new function. Well, I guess that's a, also a command at a lower level. Um, whenever I call this function, so now that I've defined it, if I call it, it will run this block of code. Uh, so everything in the function will be called once or after we run the function. Another thing that's really good to know is about how variables uh, can be passed to and from functions. So if we define a variable, like say x equals 1, uh, within our function, we can't actually access it outside the function. So let me just showcase that. 
So if we try and run the get sections function uh, and we say y equals x, we're now going to end up with an error. Yeah, because x is not defined. So in order to get anything outside the function, we have to return the value. So return x, we can say x equals get sections, and now uh, this will run. If we Okay, uh, passing variables to a function, uh, typically it's really good practice if you need a variable within a function, just pass it to the function. Uh, you can you can kind of rely, uh, like certain variables will be what's called global, but I think it's just a really good habit to get in the practice of passing the variables you want within your function to the function. Okay, and uh, so let's define the second function for the next block of code, uh, and I will call this build model. Mm. You know, let's be consistent. Let's call it get model. Okay, uh, so we have our get model function, and then we'll give an indentation to all the commands we want there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy these declarations and I'm going to put it in uh, our get model function. So this might seem uh, a little bit strange. The reason why I'm choosing to do this is I expect for the most part these node locations are going to be fairly static so I can keep them within the function itself. Uh, typically I want to be passing variables like uh, this e I'm passing to my get sections function and I'm doing that kind of in anticipation that E is something that's going to change a lot throughout my analysis or maybe it will change relatively frequently. Um, but these node locations, I don't expect them to change too much so I'm pretty content with them being within the actual function itself, excuse me, defined statically. Uh, so we want to pass a one a2 to the file as our function as well. And then we'll define a function for the quarters. We'll define it as uh, get recorders. And we'll say get recorders pushover because um, this is specifically for uh, the analysis where we were using this x deformation. Um, and then let's define a function for the analysis and we'll say run analysis run analysis uh, run pushover analysis will be explicit for what we call it and that will be this block of code and we need to pass it px and py all right so now we have our function, or excuse me, we now have our program and it's defined in this series of functions. What I want to do is I want to create two file. Actually, uh, I'll rename this uh, and let's call it model functions. And now I'm going to create a new file. And I will save this as our in our folder, the model functions, and we're going to call it main analysis. So what we're actually going to do is we'll import the functions that we've just now defined into our main analysis program, and then run everything out of that one file. Oh, sorry, I didn't delete these. Should have done that. Okay, so let's copy over our inputs uh, and copy over our units. And I'm going to leave the units defined locally uh, in this folder because we're kind we're using the units throughout these functions, um, and I and units are going to be basically static throughout. Uh, all your analysis because 
uh, the ratio of feet to a meter never changes, luckily. So let's uh, actually let's copy over the imports. We'll copy this import command. We need that, and then from our model functions, we're going to import uh, the functions we need. So from model functions import, and then all the functions we defined, which uh, for some reason I can't remember. <laughs> Get sections. Uh, hmm. Okay. Copy and paste. And then the last one was run analysis, a uh, run pushover. And we will indentate, indent that. Uh, and now, so if we create a new section and we call it run analysis. So now we can actually run our analysis using these functions. Uh, so get so the first command will be the get sections we call that and we need to pass to it e uh, get model passing a one and a two get recorders passing it nothing and then yeah run passing it px and py. Looking at our block, we can now run the analysis. We get no errors, perfect. So this did exactly the same thing as before. Uh, I just want to make sure we have, okay, good. I have a wave command. Um, so if we take a look, we can look at our nodes, our our displacements, uh, the file run properly. So we're good to go. If you're new to OpenSeas, I think this can be a little bit weird to see. Uh, really, we have done exactly the same thing as before, but we've kind of added this layer of abstraction where we've defined our functions in one place, we're using them in, in another place. Seems a little bit weird. But let's just think through why we might want to do this. Let's, for example, uh, excuse me, look at our file. Get that out of here. No paint today. <laughs> uh, if we were to say want to run an analysis that had no lateral load, so just the gravity loads of, the, of our structure, we could do that. Um, if we were to say take this, copy it, paste it, and then make the necessary changes, we want zero lateral load. Um, we could have the two different analyses in two places. However, a problem with that is very quickly it's going to become quite arduous if we have to make any changes to our file. Because let's say we're adding a fifth node, some more elements, we'd have to add the node up here. Then we'd have to go down here, find where to add it, add the same thing. Um, and really, you don't want to be doing this wherever possible. For a simple example like this, maybe you're only changing like a few lines of code, but in a big model, if you have to change 10, 20 lines of code in different places, it's just a mess. You don't want to be making these changes t across various different uh, like sections of your code like that. So looking over here, real nice benefit is this is just way more readable, first of all. Uh, we don't have to dig through a lot of lines to figure out what's going on. But I think more importantly is our code is a lot more reusable. Um, if, for example, we want to do exactly what we what I talked about over here in the basic truss, uh, we could do so by defining a new function. Oh, uh, I've already defined it over here. Uh, let's forget about that. I'm just gonna, we're going to define the new function uh, based on our old pushover analysis. Copy and paste it, and then we'll call it uh, run gravity analysis. And we'll, we'll get rid of the lateral load on our node. 
actually, so we'll just pass py to this now. Uh, and if we go to our main function, now we can run both like this. Uh, we'll rename this to run gravity analysis and remove that. And so with this same block of code, we're doing exactly the same thing as what this gigantic thing over here is doing. And really nicely, uh, the, these like functions for the sections are exactly the same. So if we were to say make a change to our model, it would be updated in both of the analyses that we're running, uh, which is a really nice thing to do. Um, let's make one quick change before we move on, uh, because we're going to be running more than one analysis in the future. I want to actually pass a parameter to the get recorders. Uh, so if you see what's going on right now, I am running the model twice. Uh, and if we run this, it works good. <laughs> um, but if we, if we run this, it does run twice, but what's happening is it's actually rewriting uh, our old recorders. So I'm just going to give each like analysis a name and then each uh, recorder, I'm going to pass that name to the recorders to make unique recorders. So uh, this isn't the best practice, but I'll just I'll call some uh, variable analysis name. So analysis name, we'll say this equals pushover and I'll pass that to the recorders. Uh, we'll rewrite it down here. That's why I'm saying this is bad practice. You should probably have unique names, but we're going to be bad. So we're going to call this one gravity. And then if we go to our recorders function up here, we'll pass the analysis name to that. And we'll add that to each. And let's give it an underscore. So we'll add that variable to each of the names, give it a nice underscore. Now let's delete our old, go back to the main analysis. If we run this, uh oh, uh, oh, of course, I need to pass this analysis name to the recorders. If we run this, now we have the two sets of analyses from each of uh, the analysis, the analyses that I've defined, analysis, I don't know, I'm saying analysis too much. <laughs> um, but anyways, we'll have two analyses, one for the gravity load, one for the pushover load. And we have uh, the names, so it's named appropriately. Okay, anything else for the functions? I think that's all I'm going to say in this part of the video. Uh, in the next part, I'll show you how we can really use this to, to leverage um, some pretty cool things. So keep your eye out for part two. And that's that.